cochlear implant simulator a model of a cochlear implant it will take the sound of um, do one do it doesn't do much at the moment that's unfortunate it looks like you've already set up a basic flask web application with some javascript for audio processing and visualization on the client side your current code structure is mostly set i can suggest a few improvements and clarifications especially if you want to enhance the functionality or maintainability of your code improved route handling if you plan to expand the application it might be a good idea to organize your routes better and maybe even consider using blueprints for scalability configuration it's often a good practice to separate configuration settings like debug and port into a configuration file or environment variables Responsiveness. Ensure your CSS handles different screen sizes. This might involve using media queries or frameworks like Bootstrap or Tailwind CSS. JavaScript modularization. As your JavaScript grows, instead of splitting it into modules. This helps keep your code base clean and maintainable. Web Audio API usage. Your current setup for Web Audio API is pretty basic. You might want to explore more features of the API or handle more edge cases, like different user environments. Visualization enhancements. If the visual aspect is crucial, you might consider using a library like D3. JS for more dynamic and interactive visualizations. And in a separate file, audio processing. JS, you can define the function setup audio nodes, create audio nodes, and visualize. These are just starting points. Depending on your specific needs and future expansions, adjustments would be necessary. I feel we don't want it to be more complicated than just one file, but we will go with it. Because <laughs> obviously the bot uh, knows better, so we generate the uh... Audio processing JS, and this is in uh, static control to change that file. What on earth what are you doing? Just need to do this. Hey, uh, okay, yeah, we're splitting the thing. So we go with what it says for now. Didn't didn't finish generating that. Bit slow. That's okay, because it does a lot of coding for us, uh, so we shouldn't be complaining. To better structure your JavaScript code, we'll define the setup audio nodes, connect audio nodes, and visualize functions in a separate file called audio processing, JS. Each function handles a specific aspect of the audio processing setup. They're exported so that they can be imported and used in other scripts like your main application script. Real-time visualization. The visualize function is designed to continuously update the canvas, providing a real-time view of the audio processing effect. This script will handle initializing your application, managing user interactions, and integrating with the audio processing logic. The script imports functions from audio processing. JS, ensuring the setup and visualization logic is maintained separately, enhancing code readability and maintenance. Event listener for DOM content loaded. This ensures that the script executes only after the full HTML document has been completely loaded, avoiding any element targeting issues. It checks and resumes the audio context if necessary, addressing an issue where browsers might suspend audio operations to save resources or adhere to user interaction policies. Accesses the microphone using the web apis and sets up the audio stream as a source for the audio context. One one. It's not still not doing anything. So the good thing is that we can do this. Would be a processing sound the green bars are not moving i suspect we're not actually processing the audio from the microphone why is visualize also in the audio process doesn't make much sense the issue you're experiencing with the static green bars in your visualization likely stems from the way the audio processing chain is set up or how the visualization function is interacting with the audio data since the bars are not moving, it can indicate that either the audio data isn't being processed correctly or the visualization logic isn't updating based on the audio data. Check audio node connections. Ensure that all audio nodes are properly connected in sequence and that audio data flows through this chain. Sometimes a misconnection can hold the audio processing. Verify data flow. Insert console.log statements at different points in your audio processing chain to verify the data is flowing and nodes are processing the data as expected. Update visualization logic. The current visualization might not be effectively capturing changes in audio data. Let's add some debug outputs to see if data is being updated and then ensure the visual representation matches the audio data processing. Enhance visualization function. Add more diagnostic logs to understand what's happening with the audio data. Ensure that each filter is properly connected not just to the next filter, but also to an output node. If they're changing but not reflecting visually, the issue might lie in how the canvas is being updated. Normally I don't like uh, copilot's uh, suggestions. Uh, we have the following error. The code that we currently have is above. One, one, one. Well, something's moving there, just being saturated. Saturated. 
Yeah, it's moving there as well. So it's just too much like noise in there. Check for Q data and time data right after fetching them to ensure they contain expected values. One, 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 one. Okay, this visualization function seem to work okay. The green bars are actually changing. The filter activity is jumping around. But uh, we need to improve the visualization because it's not uh, actually changing much. Can you check the visualization? It uh, seems to be being saturated at the top of the canvas. So I don't see the changes uh, clearly. Uh, can you also explain what the visualization, visualization does? We might need to improve it so that the dynamic range is uh, better. In other words, uh, change the sensitivity of the chart. One more. It's going to crash on me. From the description of your issue and the visible saturation of the bar heights at the top of the canvas in your visualization, One. it sounds like the dynamic range of the visual representation needs adjustment to more clearly show the variations in audio signal processing. This adjustment will help to ensure the changes in the audio input are more distinct and easier to interpret visually. Your current visualization works by creating two sets of bars for each frequency band. Filter activity. This shows the average magnitude of frequencies within the band after passing through a bandpass filter. Envelope activity. This represents the output from the envelope follower, which tracks the amplitude changes of the filter signal, providing a smooth representation of its energy. Issues and improvements. Scaling issue. The saturation at the top suggests that the values might need scaling to fit better within the canvas height. Dynamic range adjustment. Adjusting the sensitivity so the smaller changes are more visible, which might involve applying a nonlinear scaling function to the values. One, one. One, 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 one. One. Yes, yeah, so we get essentially a noise. Noise in the lower, lower frequencies. Let's implement these changes with a logarithmic scaling approach to enhance the visibility of smaller variations. Logarithmic scaling. Using math. Log 10 helps in expanding the dynamic range of quieter sounds while compressing the louder ones, making the visualization more sensitive to changes in quieter sounds. Yes, yeah, so that's one. This method is commonly used in audio uh, meters to better affect human uh, perception one, of loudness. One, one, one. Visualization adjustment. The scaled filter activity and scaled envelope activity calculations include a small constant, one, to prevent taking a logarithm of zero, which is undefined. What to expect? This update should make the visual representation of both filter and envelope activities less prone to clipping at the top of the canvas, making it easier to observe subtle changes in the processed audio data. This should give you a clearer, more detailed view of how different audio inputs affect the visual output, especially for signals with low amplitude. Uh, how many bands do we currently have? Might be a good question for Copilot. As you can see from the image, I do get I do get the a red bar a fluctuating very slightly. And the green bars seem to be saturated in the middle of the screen. So I said that the number of bands is determined by the length of the frequencies array. Uh, there are 10 frequencies specified. I think these frequencies might be uh, needed in uh, tuning, tuning up. Based on your setup and the screenshot provided, it appears you have 10 bands, as dictated by the length of the frequencies array in your audio processing. JS script. This array defines specific frequencies at which bandpass filters are applied, thus creating 10 distinct frequency bands. They're meant to be changing over time. If the green bars are saturating in the middle of the screen while the red bars are fluctuating slightly, there are a few steps you can take to optimize and potentially fix these issues. If the bars are saturating, it might be beneficial one, to adjust one, the scaling one, function one, one, used one, in your visualization one. code. As I previously suggested, a logarithmic scale can help, but you might need to fine tune the scaling factor. One, 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 one. That was, was a bit better, but I still don't get it. If you believe the chosen frequencies might need tuning, consider the characteristics of human hearing or specific requirements of your simulation. Humans typically hear between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, and for educational purposes, you might want to cover a range that showcases different aspects of hearing. Low frequencies, important for understanding bass sounds, e.g., 20 hertz, 50 hertz, 100 hertz. Mid frequencies, often crucial for speech recognition, e.g., 500 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz. High frequencies, relevant for high-pitched sounds, e.g. 4 kHz, 8 one. kHz, 16 kHz. Here's an example of how you might redefine your frequencies array to cover a broader range. Uh, no, I don't want to cover broader range. I want to cover the range of my microphone. Don't I need... It seems to be outside the range of my microphone. The analyzer node settings in your audio context, such as FFT size and the range of frequencies it analyzes, could also impact how the data is visualized. Increasing the FFT size can provide more detailed data.
one, 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 one. Ensure that each node is correctly connected and that there are no issues in the signal chain which could cause unexpected saturation or kipping. Here's how you can adjust your visualization function to apply these updates. These adjustments will help improve the dynamic range and visibility of the visualization, better representing the actual audio processing taking place. Two, one, two, one, two. Is this better? Not sure. Mine is slightly better, but I don't quite understand. Uh, what? Uh, can you explain the visualization again? Uh, first, it seemed to be not uh, sensitive enough. Uh, second, we want to improve it. Why do I only see... So most of the changes in the lower frequency range, does it mean that uh, my microphone, there's a limitation of my microphone, the green bars are not changing. And I don't essentially see any change in the higher frequencies. I think it's a limitation of my microphone. How can I improve the code? Yeah, when it's uh, generating uh, slowly like that, it means I have to give it a rest. And that's when we also about to hit the uh, limit. But I'm sure that sentence changed clear. It seems like you're encountering a couple of issues with the sensitivity and range of your visualizations, especially concerning how they respond to different frequency bands. Let's break down the concerns and address them. Visualization mechanism, frequency data, filter activity. This is measured using the analyzer node, which provides a frequency analysis across the defined bands. Each bar represents the average amplitude within a specific frequency band after the signal has passed through a bandpass filter and a compressor. Time domain data, envelope activity. This tracks the envelope, outline or shape of the audio signal across time, smoothed out by a low pass filter. It provides a visual representation of how loud or soft the sound is across time, irrespective of its frequency content. Sensitivity issues. Initially, your visualization may have seemed insensitive because of the linear scale used to display amplitude changes. By switching to a logarithmic scale, as you have done, you can better capture the subtleties and nuances in amplitude, which is more aligned with human perception of loudness. Microphone limitations. If changes are mostly seen in lower frequencies and not in higher frequencies, they might indeed point to microphone limitations. Many standard microphones, especially those built into devices, have a limited frequency response, often biased towards mid-range frequencies suited for voice. High frequencies might be attenuated both by the microphone's physical capabilities and by environmental factors, e.g. room acoustics. One, two, one, two. This is not much better, is it? It's going all the way to 5,000. I thought it will have to be reduced. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, one is just being saturated. Improving code for better visualization and testing, given the potential limitations of your microphone and to improve visualization. Test with known sound samples. Use audio files that cover a broad frequency range to test your application. This can help determine if the issue is with the microphone or your code. Adjust analyzer settings. Increase the FFT size for more detailed data and possibly adjust the smoothing time constant to make the visualization more responsive to changes. Modify frequency bands. Adjust the frequency bands to ensure they are within one, the detectable two, one, two, range of your one. microphone. If your mic is weak in high frequencies, focus on lower to mid-range frequencies for clearer results. Yeah, using decibel as scale makes a lot of sense. That's the filter activity. What's the green one again? One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Further refine the logarithmic scaling or consider a different approach like dynamic range compression, which compresses the scale of inputs to a narrower, more manageable range of outputs. Debugging. Add more detailed logging to understand how the data varies across different frequencies. This can help you pinpoint if certain frequencies are not being captured well or if the visualization is inaccurately representing the received data. By implementing these changes and testing with known sound samples, you can better assess whether the issues are due to the code, the visualization scale, or indeed limitations of your hardware. This approach also gives you a more robust testing framework to ensure your simulation behaves as expected across different use cases. Uh, what's the green one again? Just sitting there doing nothing at all. Okay, don't I need to reduce the frequency range to be suitable for a standard microphone? Also, what's the green bar doing again? Seem to be not changing at all, just uh, sitting there. And I can see only limited uh, variance in the red bar. Can you explain the difference? One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two. The issues you're observing with the green and red bars can be addressed by understanding the role of each bar in the visualization and adjusting your audio processing and visualization code accordingly. These bars represent the average magnitude of the frequencies within each band after the audio has passed through a bandpass filter. 
This is calculated using the getByte frequency data method of the analyzer node, which provides a snapshot of the current frequency data. Yeah, that makes sense. These bars visualize the envelope, or the smooth outline of how loud the audio signal is over time within each frequency band. This uses the getByte time domain data method to measure the waveform's amplitude over time, smoothed by an envelope follower circuit that includes a rectifier and a low pass filter. If the green bars are static, they might indicate that the envelope follower isn't capturing changes effectively, or the settings might not be optimized for the types of sounds being analyzed. Potential issues and solutions. Frequency range limitation. You've noted the need to reduce the frequency range to match a standard microphone. Typical inexpensive microphones might have a frequency response from about 100 Hz to 15 kHz, but can be less sensitive at the extremes. Adjusting your filters to focus on this range might yield better results. Static green bars. If the green bars are static, it suggests that either the amplitude variations within each frequency band are very minimal or the envelope follower settings are not sensitive enough to detect these variations. Limited variance in red bars. Limited changes in the red bars suggest that either the audio input doesn't contain significant components in the frequencies being monitored or the scale of visualization isn't sensitive enough. Adjust your frequencies to better match the expected input from a standard microphone. Adjust the envelope follow settings to be more responsive. One, two, one, two. One. You may need to tweak the curve one, or the frequency of the low pass filter. One, 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 two, 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 one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two. Consider adjusting the scaling further or implementing a dynamic compression to handle a wide range of signal amplitudes. One, two, one, two, one. One, two. One. Yes, you can hear the noise in there. The envelope is still not doing much. What? What? That filter is funny. Filter meant to uh, make it uh, flat. Flat, flat. Ah, uh, it's not barely changing. One, two, one, two, one, two. Ah, uh, the envelope is funny. Add console logs to inspect the actual values being processed and visualized. We currently have anything in the console. No, it's be useful to one, two, one, two. Okay, okay, okay. One, two, one, two. That line of code is a, a filter activity and envelope activity, so it should go over here. No, no idea. One, two, one, two, one, two. Well, at least it's doing something now. Yeah, I have to finish up. Go check uh, wirecales.com. Uh, let me know what you think. You'll be supporting the project that way. That would be a great help. And we'll see how we go with this tool. Here is how you might modify your visualize function to reflect these changes and help diagnose issues.